Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with pound cake from the 1700s. That's right. I decided to make a historically accurate pound cake, which means one made with no electric mixers, since they didn't have those back then. In fact, they didn't even have electricity. And all the social media was actually powered by candles. And while this didn't look that great, and it had a very dense and heavy texture, at least it was hard to make and took a lot of time and effort. And my shoulder hurt for like two days. But that's fine, keep watching. Because assuming you do have an electric mixer, I'm still gonna show you how to make a delicious pound cake. And what we're gonna do first is take some room temperature butter and cream it together with some white sugar. Which because I'm pretending I'm back in the 1700s, I'm gonna attempt to do with this spatula. Although I'm pretty sure back in the 1700s they didn't have these either. And probably just would've had to use like a clean stick or something. Or maybe like a wooden spoon if you were doing well. And what we're trying to do here is get this mixture as light and airy and creamy and fluffy as possible, which is extremely hard to do by hand, especially if your butter's still a little bit cold like mine was. So for the modern version, also known as the version that will come out much better, you'll want to whip this on high speed with your electric mixer, which not only, of course, is going to be way, way faster, but that's also going to give you something much, much lighter and airier, which ultimately will give you a much lighter, much better texture. But back in the day, that wasn't an option. So I just went ahead and worked that over with the spatula the best I could until my arm was starting to hurt. Well, not starting to, it hurt. And then once I had that smeared to perfection, I switched to a whisk, which I do believe they had back then. And at this point we can start to mix in our eggs, but if you're gonna add some flavorings, this is the point you do that. And I did add a little touch of vanilla and a pinch of salt, or you could do something like lemon zest and lemon extract, or maybe some almond extract, or of course, whatever you're into. I mean, you are for all the town crier of making sure this is fire. Or just go with a classic pound cake, which actually has no flavorings. In any event, what we'll do next is toss in the first of four eggs. An extra credit if they're room temp. And whether you're going to use an electric mixer or not, each egg must be perfectly incorporated before you mix in the next one. Which again, without power tools is extremely difficult. Because as you might know, liquids and fats do not like to mix. But with an electric mixer on high speed, that first egg will eventually emulsify, and you'll have a beautiful, smooth, creamy, fluffy mixture. Unlike the partially emulsified, still sort of grainy mixture you're seeing here. But that's as good as I could get it by hand. So I tossed in the next egg, and I continued on with this incredibly unpleasant task. And seriously, I was only on egg two, and my shoulder was totally burning, and I was literally dripping with sweat. And in the history of cakes, no one's ever tasted a slice and said, this is good but it could use a little more sweat. Oh, and for your information, the reason this is called a pound cake is because the classic recipe is one pound of butter, one pound of sugar, one pound of eggs, and one pound of flour, which will actually make one giant loaf or two five by nine inch loaves. And if you're keeping score at home, I'm just using a half pound of each ingredient since I just wanted to make one loaf. But as long as the amounts of each ingredient is equal, you are still making pound cake. Even though, like I said, this is technically half pound cake. But anyway, finally, somehow I managed to whip in that last egg. And while I was kind of sort of able to emulsify it and possibly whisk in a little bit of air, when you do this with the electric mixer, you will notice all this is going to be perfectly smooth and creamy. And you're going to end up with a much larger volume because you will have whipped in significantly more air. And then what we'll do to finish this off is incorporate our flour. And for this hand method, what I did is whisk in about a quarter of it. And then once that was mixed, I went ahead and folded in the rest with a spatula. And like almost every other cake batter, we only want to fold in that flour just until it's mixed and then we have to stop. Okay, if you keep mixing, you're gonna build gluten, which is gonna give you a tough cake. And have you ever heard anyone say, I could go for a piece of tough cake? So be gentle, and whether you're doing this by hand or a mixer, only do it until the flour just disappears. And this is such a key point that even if you use an electric mixer, it's not a bad idea to fold in this flour manually anyway. Okay, you just have more control doing it by hand. And then once my pound cake batter from the 1700s was done, I went ahead and transferred that into this very well buttered loaf pan and tried to distribute that as evenly as possible. And as I mentioned earlier, a real pound cake, where you use a pound of each ingredient, will actually make two of these, or one large one, whether that's a bunt pan or a regular loaf pan. But anyway, we'll go ahead and transfer that in and smooth out the top. And then to settle everything down before this goes in the oven, We'll give it the old shake a shake -a, and the old tapa tapa, or as they called it back in the 1700s, ye old tapa tapa. 
And then once that's been shook and tapped, we'll go ahead and transfer that into the center of a 350 degree oven for about an hour or until it looked like this. And while it didn't really rise at all, at least it looked like somebody stabbed it a hundred times. And what caused those were little tiny pieces of butter that did not get emulsified into the batter and caused what we call in the business, the stabification of the surface. Oh, and speaking of stabbing, you can tell it's done if a toothpick comes out clean. And then what we should do at this point is let this cool for about 15 minutes before removing it to cool completely on a rack. And by the way, if you do the modern version using the electric mixers, you'll see this thing's gonna rise up almost all the way to the top of the pan. So above and beyond saving time and pain, aerating that batter really does make a huge difference to the rise. And then if you want, once your pound cake cools down, we can go ahead and glaze that top with a simple icing, which is nothing more than powdered sugar with enough milk stirred in to make it spreadable. And that's it, if you do glaze yours, you'll wanna let that sit until that sugar dries to the touch, at which point we can slice in and see how we did. And while it didn't rise, it really didn't look that bad. Plus it didn't really taste that bad. All right, notwithstanding the method you use, the ingredients are gonna be the same. So the taste really was fine. The problem is that flavor is concentrated in a heavy and dense delivery system. Or right, I think of how a slice of bread tastes and then how that exact same slice of bread would taste if you wadded it up into a tight ball of dough. Or maybe like the difference between a spoon of heavy cream versus a spoon of whipped cream. All right, that might even be a better example. But anyway, I did somehow manage to finish that piece and then went ahead and sliced a few more the best looking of which I plated it up. And then as we chefs love to do, when something doesn't look quite as amazing as we'd hoped, we'll go ahead and cover it with some kind of garnish. In this case, a sweetened whipped creme fraiche, as well as some fresh berries. And as I grabbed a fork and started in on this fully accessorized slice, I actually started to feel a great sense of accomplishment because even though I had exerted so much extra effort and invested so much extra time, I got to experience what it was really like to make and eat a pound cake back in the 1700s. So despite not being able to lift my arm over my achy shoulder, I decided this had all been worth it. Actually, I'm totally kidding. Nothing I just said was true. Okay, truth be told, I regretted every minute of this. Especially since I knew how this was going to come out. Dense and heavy and textually disappointing. But anyway, that's it. I'm going to stop complaining about a cake now since I'm assuming some of you have actual problems. And as I said in the intro, this still is the official and only recipe for pound cake. And if you do in fact have an electric mixer, I really do hope you give this delicious and very versatile cake a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.